The Lord be with you. Also with you. Tonight we begin the great three days of our Lord's passion, death, and resurrection. <clears throat> the journey from the supper table to the cross, from the cross to Easter dawn. We are followers in his way, exploring his truth, encountering his life. This is the night when Christ the Lamb of God gave himself into the hands of those who would betray him. This is the night when Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is the night when Christ our Lord gave us this holy feast, that as we break the bread and drink the cup, we may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and come at last to his table in heaven. This is the night when Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet showing us how to honor and serve one another in love. This is the night for watching and prayer. We give ourselves freely to the demands of these great days, confident that those who die in Christ will surely live with him. And so we pray, infinite, intimate God, this night you kneel before your friends and wash our feet. Bound together in your love, trembling, we drink your cup and watch. Hear this prayer for your love's sake. Amen. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. And he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you will have no share of me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. And after he washed their feet, he put on his robe, and he returned to the table, and he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, Everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Lord Jesus, we so want to be with you in the bread and the wine, and we cannot. We cannot because you also begged us to love our neighbors. Be with us in the power of your spirit. Fill our troubled hearts. May the power of your Holy Spirit calm all anxiety due to absence. We pray on this holy Maundy Thursday. Amen. Do you know what I have done 
to you. About six or seven holy weeks, uh, holy weeks, years ago, I was leading the renewal of ordination vows for the clergy in the Valley of Virginia, and the service was being held in Woodstock. The host for that service was Alexander McPhail, an Episcopal priest, but who grew up in the Valley of Virginia in the Church of the Brethren. As his gesture of hospitality and welcome, he arranged for his home parish, the Church of the Brethren that raised him for us to borrow their foot washing towels. Usually when I have done foot washings, I've robbed my own linen closet and Barbara has the lid to the washing machine ready to receive what I have borrowed when the service is over. This was quite different. The foot washing is key to the understanding of that part of Jesus' one family known as the Church of the Brethren. I have never handled such beautiful cloth in my life. It was all hand woven probably over a hundred years ago. Made from the finest wool. It was as soft as cashmere. And there must have been six or eight of these beautiful, luxurious, holy foot washing towels. I will never forget the privilege of using them. As I held the soft woolen towel in my hands, I touched a level of devotion or an aspect of devotion to Jesus more deeply held in that branch of Christ's family than in our own. We've been washing feet for about 40 years since the present prayer book. They've been washing feet since they began as a church. Truth be known, let's be truthful. Truth be known, we Episcopalians, like blessed Peter, are a tough bunch when it comes to foot washing. I kind of think we need to own it. For many of us, it seems much too intimate, very literal, primitive, non-rational, highly emotional, and because it involves feet, embarrassing. And we Episcopalians sometimes are all too quick to try to keep the lid on. The family member reads the lesson at grandma's funeral and is congratulated for not breaking up, for not losing it, for not crying even though Nana's gone. We're a tough bunch. And plus, let's face it, let's face it, feet are, after all, feet. Hammer toes, bunions, toenail fungus, thick nails, and the older we get, the harder it is to get to them. Care for them. Much less expose them.
for most of us, or many of us, it's been a long, long time since anyone cherished our feet with parental devotion and said, as my daddy used to say to me, this little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. And this little piggy had roast beef. And this little piggy had none. And then he would grab my littlest toe and say, and this little piggy squealed all the way home. Truth be known, I'm still that little boy. You're still that little girl. Because we grow the way trees grow. We grow around the previous season, not away from it. Deep in here, somewhere, is that little boy whose daddy cherished his feet. The way I cherished every little toe and every little finger of my babies and my grandbabies. Deep inside, sometimes so deeply inside that I have trouble accessing him. There is a little boy who once upon a time had his feet cherished. I doubt that Peter's mother played this little piggy being Jews and pigs being unclean. I doubt if she played that game, but I bet she held Peter's foot. And I bet at some point she kissed each of his toes. I bet Peter's mother cherished him the way moms do. I bet Peter's mother cherished his feet once upon a time. The way a woman with a priceless jar of nard took her rabbi and her Lord's feet into her hands and cherished them and lavished upon those feet not just her nard but her willingness to endure shame for the sake of a larger love. At that supper, in that room, Jesus had Peter's feet in his hands. Peter felt the water. Peter felt the rough towel. And Peter felt the costly tenderness. And then the question. Do you know what I have done to you? Do you know what I have done to you, Peter? That night, I think, 
at best. He could only have an inkling of an answer. After the weekend of horrors at a subsequent breakfast, he will be more certain. Peter, do you know what I have done to you? Not for you, but to you. It's a very interesting prepositional choice. Only years later, as Peter is nailed to his own cross in Rome, will he know that on that night, Peter made Jesus his very own. On that night, Peter was made an extension of serving love. On that night, Peter found that love so amazing, so divine, demanded his soul, his life, his all. his very self. Every hand woven thread in those brethren foot washing towels was a meditation on what it means to be a disciple and a reflection on what it is that Jesus does to each of us this night. I am so sad that a dream that Ben and I and others had is not happening tonight. We were going to institute an agape Eucharist we were going to have the Eucharist in the parish hall. There was going to be a lavish table with cheese and fruit and bread and wine and apple juice and families. And it was going to be the one Eucharist this year we did at the table. Then we were going to process the Eucharist into the church. We were going to strip the altar. We were going to be the St. James family together. I grieve it. And I know that you do as well. But we're only missing part of the gift. Because the other reality that Jesus institutes on Holy Thursday is radical and faithful discipleship. Whereby washing feet, he did something to Peter and to every person in that room. And he said, wash each other's feet. Be that kind of a community be that kind of a church. And so we now wash feet. We now cherish each other despite our particular sins, our omissions, our stupidities. We've all walked down some of the same putrid byways and highways. We've got a lot of dung and grit and mud and dirt and garbage on our feet because we have wandered in a wasteland from time to time. But he's held them. He's washed all of that away. 
He's wiped them clean. And now we're transformed. We are as transformed into his body as bread is transformed into his body, as wine is transformed into his blood. Do you know what he has done to us? With such sublime and intimate trust. Because we know what he has done to us. We wash feet, and some of you will wash feet in your homes in just a moment. And some of us will buy our neighbor's groceries. And some of us who are nurses are going to go to the hospital and do our shift. And some of us who are first responders are going to get into the ambulance one more time. And some of us are going to send more money to the Salvation Army and the food pantry than we ever have. And some of us are going to call our lonely neighbors on the telephone. And some of us are going to actually do something very old-fashioned and write a handwritten note that can be read over and over and over again. And some of us, because we are his, are going to do this act of faithful discipleship this year. Because we know what he has done to us. And even though I'm self-conscious, Just because it's simple, and just because it's easy, doesn't mean it's not love. It doesn't mean that I'm loving, not loving my neighbor, cherishing her health, protecting her, protecting my doctor, who is also an emergency room physician, protecting the nurses that I know, protecting the people I don't even know. I put this mask on that both protects you from me and because it is a sacrament of reality does frighten us all even more than the worst grisly Halloween mask. This is a Monday Thursday that will de define our lives and our souls. And it is both the most daunting and in some ways the most impacting Holy Week of my life. Do you know what he has done to you? Do you know in the deepest desperate place in your soul that you are so cherished all the way home. Amen.
we have suggested that if you choose at your, in your homes to do the foot washing, now would be the time to do it. So I will pause for just a few moments as you ready the towel and the bowl. Also this year, like no other year that I have experienced, this may be the year to practice hand washing in addition to foot washing as a primary way that we care for each other. The Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what your Lord and Master have done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Peace, Peace is my, my last life. gift to you. My own peace I'll now leave with you, peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Peace is my last gift to you, my own peace I now leave with you, peace which the world cannot give. I give to you. On this holy Thursday night, united with the Christian family throughout the world, in this first day of the Holy Tritium, let us pray fervently for the church and for the world for which the Lord Jesus died. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church throughout this wide world, for Christians new to the gospel, for those deepening their yes to you in faithful discipleship, for those who will be baptized when that becomes possible, for those whose faith may have grown cold, that they would have an outpouring and a renewal of faith to face this hour with you. Lord, in your mercy. For those who are alone tonight, praying in solidarity with their family, the church, but away from that church family. Bind us to gather through the power of your Holy Spirit with cords of affection that cannot be broken. May we know that we live in each other's hearts in a particular way. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, our Lord and our God, our Savior and our friend, our brother, this night in the garden you knew fear. Your fear was palpable in sweat and in blood. Our fears are palpable. So mingle our fears with yours so that hope will be rekindled in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy.
Lord Jesus. Out of your great love, you left us the sacrament of your most precious body and blood. Communicate your presence as we gratefully acknowledge that sublime gift. And so give us a sense of your presence, your power, your peace, and your tender love in other ways so that we may be at this time, in our time, your hands, your heart, your love, your wisdom, because of whom you have made us to be, even your very own. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now move to the devotion of the stripping of the altar, which is an enacted prayer. The actions match the desolation of the words of Psalm 22. Our actions are meant to invite us into that desolation that Jesus knew in the garden. And we pray that in solidarity with him, we may by the power of his cross and resurrection find new hope, a consuming resilience, an intention to follow him in the way that leads to life. In his holy name and to his glory, we do these things. Amen. My God, my, my God, God, why have you forsaken me? And are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my guide when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a raving and roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. 
I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face among them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done.
When the disciples had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus prayed to the Father, If it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. He said to his disciples, How is it that you were not able to keep watch with me for one hour? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the power of sinners. Christ was obedient unto death. Go in his peace.